when Nolan Smith popped at Eagles OTAs, and now he's stunning under Von Miller at his pass rush summit. Philadelphia has five standouts from OTAs, all of which you would not expect, and one Eagles quarterback, he's going to be featured in a Netflix documentary series. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Wednesday. Let's jump into the latest Eagles and NFL news and rumors. Be sure to subscribe if you appreciate the channels. We approach 13,000. So Nolan Smith, by all I mean, reports, seemingly was fantastic at Eagles OTAs. However, he's trying to emulate his game not just after the guys like Hassan Reddick. He wants to look like Micah Parsons and, most importantly, Von Miller. Look at this tweet here from NFL Rookie Watch. Quote, Nolan Smith hit this bag with some serious pop. Smith was reportedly highly impressive at Eagle OTAs. He recently they attended Von Miller's Pass Rush Summit along with Micah Parsons and Max Crosby. Smith also noted that Miller is one of the players that his game is, quote, modeled after the Eagles rookie linebacker is off to a hot start. And so good news continues to roll out of Eagles camp in terms of the fact that Nolan Smith looks like an absolute steal at number 30. He might be the steal of the entire draft. Now, further on in this, he was asked about, you know, who do you model, model, model your game after? He said, quote, I watch my body type like Von Miller or Son Reddick and the moves that they use and just the different things that they do, not only with their hands, but how they bend the edge and use the power and speed and how they set up their moves to play a game within a game. So I focused on the bending at the top of my rush in my game just because I think it helped me get to the quarterback quicker and also big guys don't want to get down there and touch you and quote and of course he went to this pass rush summit which is a Von Miller thing that he hosts every single year you saw Micah Parsons was there Cam Jorgen Max Crosby Jeffrey Simmons Bobby Wagner uh, a lot of good pass rushers were there all kind of studying and you know, offensive linemen have done this as well the offensive lineman summit Lane Johnson obviously has attended that one as well this just just goes to compound the whole idea that the first round draft was absolutely fantastic for the Philadelphia Eagles Carter seemingly was very focused looked fantastic was in shape and now Nolan Smith even though he was taken number 30 overall, mainly due to the lack of production during his final year at UGA, but of course at an incredible combine, he looked fantastic as well. Big thumbs up for that. That is great news for Philadelphia. Now, let's move over here to what was something that took us all by storm right, right during the NFL draft, and that was this idea of the Derrick Henry guaranteed trade to the Eagles. Now, there was this guy who was a former NFL player, and I believe he was on, I think it's American Ninja Warrior. I forget his name. It's Akbar. Um, I can't remember. I'm terrible at saying his last name. But he put out a tweet basically saying that Derrick Henry to the Eagles was guaranteed. Well, he finally went on the Rich Eisen show just the other day and explained what exactly went wrong there. Take a listen. I had a very credible, credible source, and I do believe that I actually messed up this trade because it wasn't supposed to come out. Oh, really? And Whoa. so I didn't... I didn't realize that A, anybody would be paying attention. B, I didn't think that I wasn't supposed to say it. So I just said, hey, you know what? Let me go ahead. You know, I wasn't trying to compete with Ian Rappaport and, you know, uh, and all the this, other guys who could have made it happen. We saw what he did with Jalen Hurts. He made that work, right? Oh, no, of course. We saw what he did with A.J. Brown. He of made course. that work. You could have had it. This could have happened, but I think because I got out ahead of it and it just blew up, I just kind of I, I blew up the scene. So he's saying that it was going to happen and his report ruined it, which doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not like this is Adam Schefter reporting out there saying it's going to happen, and then the teams go ahead and pull back because Schefter knows something that maybe they don't. I just continue to, you know, cry foul on this one. Maybe he had a good source, but maybe that source was wrong. Sources are wrong. I mean, for a long time ago, I had a tip that Jalen Ramsey visited with the San Francisco 49ers during free agency, like years ago, and multiple people refuted it, but my source basically guaranteed and said that it had happened. And so it's a he said, she said sort of business, especially when you're not Adam Schefter and you're not Ian Rappaport. I mean, we hear, hear things all the time. I've heard stuff before, and I don't post it because it's like I'm not Adam Schefter. I'm not Rappaport, and I hear it from one person, and Big J Journalism says you need two sources in order to be credible and have sources in terms of the facts. So is he right? Is he wrong? I'm not sure, but as of now, he looks wrong in the end because Derrick Henry did not get traded. The Eagles traded for DeAndre Swift instead and seemingly have no spot on their roster for Derrick Henry any more. Okay, over here, two Philadelphia Eagles, five winners and, uh, five winners, I should say, from their offseason workouts and OTAs. Eagles Wire USTA A Today has this one. A couple of these we've mentioned before. Let's run through this list to give you guys uh, some names to watch as we head into training camp. The first of which we said before, Christian Ellis. He took the first team reps at linebacker in seven on sevens, had two interceptions, one of Marcus Mariota and one of uh, Jalen Hurts. He seemingly is the leader in the clubhouse to get one of those starting jobs. Now, training camp is long and times can change, but right now, he looks like he could be really, really 
I mean, is surprising and impressive after what we saw from OTAs. Next player is Quez Watkins. All the reports have said Quez Watkins looks different. He looks better. He's, you know, everything that you wanted him to be the first couple of seasons. This is going to be his year. Now, there are no pads. Obviously, they're kind of just running routes against air. It's not necessarily, you know, crazy competitive seven on sevens. But so far, everyone from Nick Sirianni to Jalen Hurts have admitted that Quez looks really, really good. Next player on this list is Nolan Smith. Just mention him. Not much more to say here. He looks really good. He looks like he could be a, you know, highly competitive, instant impact sort of player for Philadelphia and seemingly a steal at number 30 overall. Finally, or as I say, fourth is Joseph Ngata, the wide receiver out of Clemson. First off, he's massive. Everyone's saying, you know, 6'3", 217, the 50-50 balls. Uh, very intrigued to see if he has a spot on this roster. The problem is he has a long way to go in terms of actually making the roster because Devin Allen, Greg Ward, Tyree Cleveland, I mean, Charleston Rambo, a lot of these guys are not only ahead of him or at least close to him, but very competitive for that wide receiver spot. And finally, we mentioned him earlier, Zach McPherson, a couple of shows ago. He was playing slot, and he was starting at slot because Avante Maddox uh, was getting moved around a little bit there. But he has been kind of a... Uh you know, no show for Philadelphia since being drafted out of Texas Tech a couple of years ago and really didn't have a shot to start on the outside because of Darius Slay and James Bradbury. But the fact that he is getting some reps on the inside is great news for Philadelphia because they've had serious issues when Maddox does go down at the nickel cornerback slot. Okay, move over here quickly to what is, I think, an incredible, incredible thing that Netflix is doing. They're doing a, a quarterback docuseries where they followed Kirk Cousins, Marcus Mariota, now Eagle Marcus Mariota, and Patrick Mahomes through the entire 2022 NFL season and the trailer just dropped. Here's a snippet. I'm going to take you out here. No. Hell no. I'm good. This is about as close as they'll ever get to seeing what it's like to be a quarterback in this league. I dedicate my life to football. All day. All day. I love to compete. I love the relationships that come with that. Netflix and these sports documentaries, or at least sports following people throughout the year. I mean, Full Swing, the golf one was really, really good. Uh, Point Break, the tennis one I thought was fantastic. This is going to be really, really, really good. It's like hard knocks, but for just players, and you get the entire season. You're going to get to watch Kirk Cousins lose to Philadelphia. You're going to get to watch Marcus Mariota struggle with the Atlanta Falcons. And Patrick Mahomes, I guess, you're going to get to see him beat Philadelphia in the Super Bowl. You might skip that episode, but this is going to be a really cool docuseries. Very excited to see this happen. If you had to pick an eagle, I mean, honestly, Jalen Hurts would be great at this. Would Jalen Hurts ever sign up for it due to the fact he has a very personal personal life? Mm, not sure, but I would watch the heck out of that. I'm going to watch the heck out of this as it's dropping in July. Okay, other quick little news and notes here. We mentioned Isaiah Simmons before being a linebacker trade candidate for the Eagles. Doesn't seem to be the case anymore. He's changing positions from linebacker to defensive back. Take a listen. Uh, I've been with the defensive back so far. Um, so, uh, you know, we're just kind of taking it from there as of now. So, moving forward, I'll be with the defensive backs. An interesting move here. Now, he always was an undersized linebacker, but he was quick. You know, you make up for it there with the si or with the speed versus the size. But moving to DB makes him kind of useless for Philadelphia, meaning Patrick Queen is kind of the only other tradable linebacker option out there unless you want to pay Devin White $20-plus million a year, which nobody does. All right, final storyline here. I mentioned this yesterday quickly. Saquon Barkley, a new report has come out saying he just turned down $14 million a year after already turning down $12 million a year. And he still has not signed his franchise tag, and he remains technically um, not at any sort of off-season workouts or off-season practices or mandatory minicamps for the New York Giants. Now, he's going to play for the Giants this year. I doubt he's going to hold out the entire season. Sitting an entire year doesn't really work. Ask what Le'Veon Bell, it didn't work very well for him. But the fact that he's turning down $14 million a year, I get that you are one of the best running backs at your position, but, I mean, read the room. You're a running back. The Eagles are paying $6 million a year for four of their running backs, and they're probably going to have similar numbers, all four combined to Saquon Barkley, who wants $14 million a year. So, uh, good luck. You know, again, the giant offense runs through Barkley. They're going to need him. I know they made some additions like Darren Waller and some receivers, but Daniel Jones is not going to turn into Danny Dimes anytime soon. They need to run the football to set up the pass, and right now, not able to do so with Barkley not being at camp. Okay, tonight we're doing our Wednesday link live. Hop on live, uh, the live show at 7 p.m. Myself and Josh Davis for about an hour, hour 15. We take questions. We take entries into our ticket giveaway. We do a bunch of fun stuff. 7 p.m. Don't be late. Link will be down below in the description box. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show. I'm